What's the process of <laughs> seeing the positive in things? Let me tell you something. I was 20, this is the beauty of my journey, especially in front of the camera. The first time I ever got in front of the camera, I was 22 years old. And my nickname on the real world was Crazy Karamo. <laughs> It wasn't positive Karamo, it wasn't uplifting Karamo, it was crazy Karamo. Because I used to walk in the room and be like, F you, F you, your mama going to hell, I can't stand your daddy. Um, say that to your neighbor. Yeah, exactly, exactly, I would say, exactly, say that to your neighbor. And so, you know, it was because I was dealing with so much of my own issues that I wasn't focusing on. and. I realize that when you are truly in that old saying of hurt people hurt people, it, it's so true. But I think sometimes we don't realize that there's subconscious things that are hurting us that then we start to lash out on. And for me, it was practicing every day being better. I, I just put out this thing on my social media where people always say, what's the key to success? What's the key to being positive? And the key to being successful and the key to being positive is being 1% better today than you were yesterday. That's it. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Yeah. Neighbor. Be better. Be better. One percent today. One percent today. Than you were yesterday. Than you were yesterday. That's the key to it. Because for me, I realized there was so much going on. There was so much inner turmoil. And it seems very overwhelming when you have to think about facing it all. Right. So if you can just face one thing, just one thing. Like my emails. Your, like your emails, we talked about her emails. She had 80,000, now she's down to 80. Come on, give it up. So 80,000 emails would give me anxiety and I would have been running down the street naked, okay? So, um, but be just 1% better. You know, I think about it like, when you started communicating, you used one word or one sign and then you were able to formulate a sentence and then you were able to formulate you know a conversation and it's the same thing goes with being positive and being successful in life you just have to focus on one thing and be okay with just that one thing don't feel as if you have to do more than that one thing and that's how i got there like the beauty of reality television for me was <laughs> and i would recommend everyone to go on reality television just once in your life you know it is it, it is a trip to see your actions edited and then have music underlaying. <laughs> like on the real world, they when I used to enter the room, they used to play a, a, a theme song that was similar to Jaws. <laughs> and I was like, why is Jaws coming? And then I would turn the corner and I was like, oh snap. That's what people think, like I'm about to come attack them. And so it allowed me to see my actions, but in no, not even just seeing my actions, it allowed me to see the effects of my actions. Because I too often, you know, we don't get to see how our words or how our actions affect other people. You know, you'll be at work and you'll have a conversation with your boss or a coworker, and of course you think in that moment that, okay, I've made my point, and you walk away, but you don't realize how much you hurt them. And being on reality, or how much they hurt you, and being on reality television, I was able to see when I walked out of that room, I remember being proud that I made my point of view, that I said my piece. But then I didn't see that this young man or this young woman was in the room crying because of something I said. And I thought to myself, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the guy when I walk out the room, people are crying. Well, I guess I am kind of that guy now in Queer Eye. Listen, it's a good cry. Yeah, but it's a good cry now. Um, there's training behind it, you know, there's, um, but, in the sense, I didn't want to be the guy that walks out of the room that people feel hurt. Mm -hmm. And so I practice every day just being 1% better. And so I would check myself in the moment and say, oh, this is how I ended up being bad mm -hmm. yesterday. So today, I'm going to make a different choice. And I also had patience with myself. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of times we don't have enough patience with ourselves. We, give, we have patience with everybody yeah, else. Everyone else. But yeah. we don't have patience with ourselves. We don't have patience with our journey of growth. And so for me, I'm patient with my journey. Like if I didn't get it today, I say, you know what, Karama, you don't get it tomorrow. <laughs> if I didn't get it tomorrow, I say, girl, get it together. But it's okay, <laughs> you don't get it. And I do that all the time. You know what I mean? It's just having patience with yourself. Like your journey of healing and growth, do it at your own pace. It's okay to heal and grow at your own pace. We're gonna do, it. turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. It's okay. It's okay. To heal and grow. To heal and grow. At your own pace. At your own pace. All right now. You're gonna be singing songs soon, guys. <laughs>